is me, Gavin Hardcastle, and I'm a very professional photography instructor, currently driving my way through the western states of America. So yesterday I left Moab in Utah, I drove through the night all the way through Idaho and now I'm in Oregon and I'm on my way to Washington State and there's a place there called Lower Lua Rivis, Lower Lua, no, Lower Lewis River Falls. I haven't had enough coffee today clearly. Um, I've been there before, I got an okay shot, this is the shot that I ended up getting before and um, I wasn't too happy with the, the mess of the tree logs on the right and the colours were kind of strange that day so I ended up turning it into a black and white image but I, I know for a fact that there's a good shot to be had from further up the river looking down river uh, and it's autumn right now so the fall colours might just be kicking off if I'm lucky so that's where I'm headed, that's the shot that I've got in mind Often I'll drive somewhere with a particular shot in mind and sometimes I'll get that, but oftentimes I don't get that. I have to adapt to the conditions and go for something completely else. So I guess we'll see when we get there. It's actually a gorgeous frosty and misty morning here in Oregon. Uh, I left Baker City about an hour and a half ago and everything has got this layer of crispy, sharpity frost on it. It makes everything look super sharp and, and kind of pale and white and there's this gorgeous mist that's been rolling into the scene for like the last 45 minutes. It's absolutely gorgeous and now the sun's risen and it's hitting this mist and it's like, oh, do I stop? Do I pull over and, you know, hike into a field and see if I can get an entirely new shot or do I just stick to the plan and probably like you you just stick to the plan you don't get out you think well I'll get it some other time but you never do do you you never never do get it some other time so I'm kind of tempted but we'll see I'm also gagging for a coffee or whatever currently passes for coffee with my limited choices on the road if you've seen any of my previous videos you'll already know that I am not too posh to drink any old bean sludge with ultra high caffeine content oh got me coffee from my gas station let's see what it's like not terrible that's not bad right back on the road So in the state of Oregon, when you stop at a gas station, or at a petrol station as we call them in England, you can't pump the gas yourself, you have to wait for an attendant to come and pump your gas for you. If you try and pump it, it's illegal, you get into trouble. Um, and I kind of have mixed feelings about that, I guess they do that because they want to create jobs, which is a great thing, but at the same time, if you're in a rush and it's busy in that gas station and you're trying to get fuel, you can't get it because you've sat there waiting for 10 minutes for some guy to get to you. It's a major inconvenience, so yeah, good things and bad things about that. What I do like about Oregon though is there's no tax. You don't pay tax on anything. It's a tax-free state. So yeah, if you, food is cheaper, buying electronic goods is cheaper. So that's pretty sweet. No trip through Oregon is complete without a stop at my favourite taco shop in Hood River. These tacos are more addictive than binge watching all seasons of Breaking Bad and Ozark. Whoa. <laughs> Thanks for putting a rush on those. Yeah, no problem. So those are, the, what are they called? The Pork Street Tacos. The Pork Street Tacos. Mm -hmm. I, I've had these before and I, I took a detour all the way to Hood River just to get these. They're so good. <laughs> Thanks a lot, love. Yeah, no problem. Cheers. Enjoy. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Mm. oh god these are so good i might have to order a second set is that bad of me mm. Mm. now whether or not i ordered that second round or maybe even a third is none of your beeswax next up was the toll bridge that took me from oregon to washington state and being a typical stingy yorkshireman i couldn't resist grumbling at the two dollar toll hi how's it going good when did the price double two years ago two years ago yes. it's been a while <laughs> thanks Thank you These fall colours are absolutely gorgeous. I'm just gawking at things as I'm driving past, trying not to crash. But yeah, Washington is absolutely aflame 
with gorgeous yellows and reds and oranges. Choosing toes! I thought I'd just take a little pit stop on the way to uh, Lower Lewis River because that right there is Mount St Helens and uh, if you know that name you'll know that it had an eruption in 1980 which was quite catastrophic and they say that it happens about once every 125 years so I should be okay living not too far from here but it's so huge and impressive the GoPro doesn't really do it justice so even though this isn't my favorite kind of light I'll just take a quick little shot for you so you can see a long telephoto shot of it to see how massive it really is. And with that final detour over, I was only 30 minutes from my ultimate destination. The road to Lower Lewis River Falls took me through some gorgeous forests with delicious autumn colours that were very distracting. Oh, you have arrived. Oh, bloody hell. Alright. As soon as I got packed up, it was time to get cracking, strap on the camera bag of doom, my two tripods, and then hit the trail. Yeah, that's me, pretending that I can't see the GoPro right there on the floor. And after literally minutes of casual strolling, I finally arrived. Look at that boy's nurse. I do realise that I am very lucky and I don't take this for granted. I get to see some of the most beautiful scenery on planet Earth and this was totally worth driving through the night and a little bit of sleep deprivation. So I took my time, scoped out some juicy camera angles and I found some really tasty compositions and I even managed to get the whole place all to myself. So I made it to Lewis River Falls and it's absolutely gorgeous here. I've been here before but sometimes when it's been a few years you kind of forget how gorgeous a place is and this is just epic. Now I've spent about the last 30 minutes trying to find different comps, different angles with different focal lengths and as much as I'd love to get a big super wide shot, the thing that I'm drawn to the most is this cascade of water that you can see just pouring down off of that cliff there. So what I'm going to try and do is capture this movement of water. So if you can see that white water to the left of the frame pouring in from the left and it joins that beautiful cascade there. Now, I want to get that motion of two flows joining one another and that's so pretty right there. The only problem is the light's really harsh, it's extremely bright right now so this might just have to be a practice shot that I come back to later when the sun's gone a bit lower and a lot softer colour, there's no harsh rays of light, it's, it's a bit easier to deal with, especially for dynamic range. Till then, I'll keep working this comp and I'll see what I get. Well, I don't mind telling you that, that this is proving to be quite a challenge. With a shot like this, simplicity is key, so what I'm doing is, I'm zooming right in on the most fascinating features and isolating those, and in this case for me, it's this first drop, and then it's that cascade and also this gorgeous green colour. So that's what I'm trying to fill my frame with so that all of the things that I love fill that frame and create a, an instantly impressive picture which I hope you're going to like. What I'm also doing, I'm taking a range of exposures so I'm, I'm doing shutter speeds that vary from one sixth of a second all the way to two seconds. And the reason why I'm doing one that's two seconds is um, the water in the distance there, I love that green reflection that's hitting that water, but I like it better when it's smooth. I decided that the light was a little too harsh in the upper falls section, so off I headed downriver in order to shoot the falls from the opposite direction. And I quickly discovered this lovely yet slippery little beach right in front of the main falls. Now with the sun being so bright, I had to cover the eyepiece so that I could clearly see my shot inside the EVF, and doing that makes it a little tricky to balance even while squatting prepared to admit that I'm in the midst of a full-blown photogasm right now. I mean I've got this dripping water that's coming off this cliff which makes a gorgeous foreground and I'm looking through it to that gorgeous dramatic cascade. You put the two together it's unbelievable and the way that the sun's hitting this little this little cliff drip 
is absolutely gorgeous. However, the high dynamic range is pretty hard to deal with. So I may just have to wait a few hours for the sun to get out of the uh, path of this falls and then shoot it while it's in the shade. So we'll see, I'll stick around. I'll try a few more comps. I can see one right here that's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just gonna keep working this scene, pick my favorite and then shoot it to death. Well, I'm quite happy with what I've got there. This last shot was a long zoom into the falls just a few minutes ago as the light was slicing into it. It's creating these gorgeous highlights in the water. So for that, oh man, I had to get all kinds of different shutter speeds. So I was one thirteenth of a second because it was so bright, but I wanted a little bit more motion blur. So I stopped down to F22 and I managed to get, I think round about one tenth of a second I forget all of them because I took so many, but we'll see. We'll, we'll look at what I got in post. The problem that I had though, is there is so much light blasting into that lens and hitting the sensor that it's quite obvious my sensor is filthy. I really need to clean that sensor. So that's my top tip. Clean your sensor as often as it needs to be cleaned. And if you take a shot in super bright light, just the sky uh, or, or just a piece of white paper, you get a light on that. That's quickly going to show you how bad that sensor is. <laughs> Chances are, if you're shooting mirrorless, it probably needs a clean like mine does. You know, the biggest challenge with photographing waterfalls all the time is that with that noise, I always need a pee. <laughs> So this is the kind of light I've been waiting for. As you can see, it's still bright, it's still sunny, but there's no direct sunlight hitting the falls or the rocks or the background. Everything's very even and soft. And that means I could do a lot with that. I can control that while I'm shooting and I can control that while I'm editing. So that's my preferred type of light for a scene like this. And now for this shot, I've composed a horizontal and it's, uh, it's quite a nice shot. I've got this series of rocks coming in from the bottom left into the middle of the frame. And what I really like is the reflection of these white columns in the water there. Quite atmospheric. And I'm so happy that I've got these lovely smatterings of orange in the background, which when the light was really hard, you couldn't see those. They were just in shadow. So now that the light's softer, they've really started to pop. And uh, I can really control that when I process this image. By the way, if you fancy coming out and shooting on location with me, I'm leading a workshop in the Faroe Islands. We'll be shooting spectacular waterfalls that pour off of dramatic cliffs into the ocean. Coastal seascapes that are just going to blow your mind. Cultural, historic landmarks. Endless mountain vistas surreal island landscapes with lots and lots of green hope to see you there okay back to the video oh and like and subscribe if you would so with this shot i've zoomed in on a section that i like i've filled my frame with the cascade and those lovely fall colors that you see there use that much longer focal length and this is something that I love to do with this 24 to 105 lens. You can get a wide shot and get a sort of medium telephoto shot, pick out a detail. And I really love doing that. I'd be interested to know what you think. So the shot before that was wider, kind of the similar, similar light, almost the same composition. And then versus this shot, which is far tighter. It's almost like what you would end up with if you had a crop sensor. So let me know which you prefer, the one before or this longer focal length just can't stop shooting these long telephoto section shots. The way that the sun's just hitting those streaks and that moss. Just when I was about to go back up river, I got a rainbow. This was turning out to be such a productive day that I was getting a little bit giddy and somewhat careless with my steps. <laughs> oh, what 
an absolute disgrace. I tell you what, if I hadn't have been in such a brilliant mood, I would have had a full photo tantrum right there and then. Oh, and uh, here, enjoy this random fungus. So I headed off to the other section whilst sucking in my Shatner the whole time, and I happened to stumble upon this gorgeous little scene. Well, that was embarrassing. I, I just had a very, very humiliating wipeout, which you've just seen. Um, on my way back to the upper falls, I spied this gorgeous scene through these two trees, and the way that the light is hitting that cascade is fantastic. So, um, I really want to drag the shutter with this shot because I love the two angles of motion. You've got the vertical motion of the, the thin cascades there, and then you've got that horizontal motion of the main river coming from the main falls horizontally. So they kind of, it's getting caught up with that horizontal motion. It's beautiful. Um, oh, absolutely fantastic. I had no idea that I would get this shot, but the light has revealed this shot as it's moved around and now it's blasting into the canyon. The rainbows were fantastic five minutes ago before my embarrassing fall. So with this shot, I focused on the mossy ledges that you can see in the distance and I've stopped down to F22. I've turned my polarizer so that the reflections are reduced and it stopped out a little bit of the light and that has enabled me to get away with the perfect shutter speed of 3.2 seconds? Just look at this business. Very happy with that. Well, the sun has set and now I'm working on my final shot of the day. So today has been absolutely brilliant. I had five days of shooting in Moab didn't get a single good picture. It rained the whole time, so I didn't bag one picture, and I needed this. I really needed a good day with some productive shots. So since I got here, I think I've got maybe four or five shots. Maybe one of them's a killer, I'm not sure. Uh, but on a day like this, to get that many good shots, that's very, very good. Um, with this shot, I like the comp. I'm at F8. I've got a bit, I've got the 18 millimeter Zeiss Batiste, so it's quite wide. And with the composition, I've got this gorgeous, massive torrent of powerful water coming in from the left. And that's giving me loads of texture. So all this power comes straight into the center of the composition. And then to meet that power, these beautiful cascades that are kind of tranquil and soothing. So you've got this mixture of soft and gentle water pouring to meet this raging torrent. And I love that then together they, they go off into the distance and I love how it's framed by this tree here again I would have loved a bit more color on that tree but no complaints I'll take what I'm getting if we're talking about what I would have loved I would have loved for some clouds but there's not a single cloud so I would have liked some pink colors reflecting off all of these surfaces that would have been fantastic but like I said I've had so many good shots today no reasons to complain today has been a fantastic day get one more shot If you enjoyed this video, and I hope you did, I hope you learned something, um, subscribe to my channel and hit the old like button. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.